Today we'll be featuring Avani, a 19-year-old college dropout who started his own six-figure construction company. Avani Petras is his name, and today he'll share with you how he went from being a full-time student to a full-time contractor, making over $100,000 a year. Profit margins in excavation are very high. We love to hear numbers, so what was your revenue last year? The number one thing that I did, and this is also my key to success. What can you tell them about the estimating process and how important it is, right? Because if you get it wrong, you're not gonna make anything. So the three keys that I have used. What do you specifically need to do to take on bigger jobs, to, to do more volume? So why don't we start with you sharing about why you started the company, when, and anything else you wanna to add to that? Well, I was working in construction for about six years before I started, and I started as a foundation laborer. Mm -hmm. From that, I branched off into my own thing, and I started my own construction company because I wanted the freedom and I wanted the ability to grow. You just wanted to be your own boss. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And then what about your nursing career? How long did that last? Well, it lasted about two years because that was originally my dream because I grew up in a family that was in the in the medical field. One day I just woke up and I realized that it was not for me. Interesting. And then I just I just grabbed the bull by its horns and and went into the construction field. <laughs> I love it, man. You're doing what you love and it's, yeah. it's playing with big toys. Okay. What was your budget to get going to buy stuff and, and so forth? My budget to get going was $20,000 and I did not start out with this trailer, but I started out with this truck. So from mm -hmm. that $20,000, I bought the $10,000 truck. Okay. I bought a $6,000 trailer. And with the rest of that money, I plan in my head to finance that and put that mm -hmm. towards financing the excavator. Total, it's gonna come out to be 79, so about $80,000. That's on a four year financing plan, 0% down, 0% interest and it's about 1600 a month for, for <clears throat> this. Gotcha. And every month, I would make that money back and some. So every month I would make the, the payment for the excavator and some more for the next month. So it kept on building up like that. And once I saw that I had a uh, consistent income and consistent jobs, I decided to sell the other excavator, the old one, and I got something a little bit bigger and something that I can do a lot more with quicker mm -hmm. too. Okay. Avani, let's talk about buying the right equipment. Where do you buy yours to get the best price, quality? Uh, any tips, advice on that? The biggest tip I could give is buy new, especially mm -hmm. in this market right now, because if you buy new, there's a lot higher resale value that rather than buying something used that you don't know how, how good it was taken care of. Right. So definitely buy new from a, from a well-known dealership mm -hmm. so you know you're not getting scammed. Okay. Uh, what about like smaller pieces of equipment? Where would you go? What would be your preference? Personally, I go to Finati, and I, I know they're mainly on the on the west coast. But yeah, new new is the way to go. Talk to us about your process of estimating. Depending on the size of the project, I like to break the project down in phases. If I don't know the exact cost of the labor for that portion, I try to calculate how long it might take me to, to do the project and I calculate and I, I present that to them on an hourly bid. I like to take measurements of everything and I like to take even, I like to drive around the neighborhood to see how long it would, or how hard or how difficult it would be to get the equipment on site. Mm -hmm. I take that into consideration when I bid as well. Okay, what's your hourly rate? Does that vary from doing this to doing something else or? It varies on the size of the equipment. For this, I usually charge between 150 and 200 an hour. Oh wow, okay. And that's if, that's per, for one person operating the machine. But if I have oh, okay. another guy on site, that can, that can vary as well, depending on what we're doing that day. Okay, what can you tell, as far as a piece of advice to new construction owners who are getting into this industry, um, what can you tell them about the estimating process and how important it is, right? Because if you get it wrong, you're not gonna make anything. Well, I definitely, one thing that helped for me was uh, in order to establish yourself in the beginning, what you want to do, and this is, this is the key, in the beginning, in order to establish yourself, you gotta keep the prices as low as possible. You gotta make sure to make something, but you gotta keep the prices as low as possible. So if you think something's gonna take you two hours to do and 
you normally would charge $200 an hour, maybe try to keep it on the lower end, maybe even $100 an hour, because the most important thing in the beginning is getting the job, because after that, you can get word of mouth and, and that connection can grow. Interesting. Are you guys looking for ways to improve your memory and focus? Do you want to conquer every day while improving yourself one step at a time? Entrepreneurship needs human optimization because you are the one making all these important decisions. So you need more mental memory than everybody else around you. Our sponsor today is Onnit and they are ready to help you on your self-improvement journey. They've sold over a million bottles of their world-renowned nootropic, Alpha Brain. The nootropic is filled with clinically studied ingredients that help you with your focus and your memory. And they are so confident you're gonna love it that it comes with a no questions asked, money back guarantee. Try Alpha Brain today by using this link on it.com forward slash upflip and get up to 30% off your bottle of Alpha Brain. Again, that is O N N I T.com forward slash upflip and enjoy. We love to hear numbers. So, what was your revenue last year, gross, and what are you doing on average monthly, uh, year to date? Obviously, almost the end of the year. Uh, on average, well, I, the first half of the year I was in the smaller excavator. So on mm -hmm. average with that, I, I would say I was doing about six, 7,000, depending on the month, depending on the job, but I was between six and 16,000. Okay. And once I got this, I've been more in the 10 to, uh, 10 to 30,000 about. Okay. What did you do last year? Total. Last year total about 90,000. 90 grand, okay. But I started in April, so. Oh, nice, so it wasn't a full year. Uh -huh. So where are you at this year, once it completes, or this once it This year, I'm at about 100, I have to check to make sure, but I'm about 110, oh, nice. some, somewhere around there. Congrats, what's your What's your next goal? My next goal number-wise is 200. 200,000? 200, Double yeah. it, okay. But the year's not over either. I, I have a couple big jobs coming up this year too, so. Good. Well, on that note, um, what do you think, with just what, what you've learned, how do you scale and increase your revenue as a general contractor? Uh, reinvesting in the company, 100% reinvesting. Right now, what I, would, what I would reinvest into is buying another excavator wow, okay. and a truck. I, I plan on hopefully buying another truck um, next year and maybe we'll see where it goes, but potentially another excavator if I can hire an operator. Avani, let's talk about mistakes that you've made when you first started the construction business. Can you think of anything? Uh, I would say the biggest mistake that I made was being too broad. And mm. that was good from the aspect of getting jobs. But once people started asking me, hey, what do you do? I kind of had too many answers and that was not good. So once I cut down and once I became more specific, I was able to get further in that specific field. Yeah. yeah. What would you differently now? What would be your advice to people getting in? I would try to stick with something and be consistent to that one specific thing. Because if one week you're a tile installer and the next week you're a <laughs> landscaper, then nobody's gonna know when to call you. Gotcha. In terms of background experience, like if I wanna get into construction, I don't have any experience, like what would you say to that? Like you worked a little bit, but I don't have excavation experience, but I want to become a contractor. How does all that come together? One thing that would definitely help is getting into a trade, maybe working for another company to kind of get familiar with the whole process of doing things. And then once you get familiar enough, then you can branch off and be your own boss. Is that similar to what you did? Yeah, well, I worked for a foundation company for about four years before I started excavation and that, that was kind mm. of in the same general field. I learned how to read blueprints over there and I learned a lot of vital things from there. Okay, so it's not really viable for somebody to be completely z clueless to get into it and really maybe be successful. They first have to... You gotta learn a few things before, definitely. Yeah. Havani, let's talk about the services you offer. Like, which are least profitable, which are most profitable and what do, you, what do you spend your time doing most, would you say? I would say now I'm trying to get more into the new construction uh, industry and there's so much that goes around uh, building a new house mm -hmm. for excavators specifically and uh, that, that's, that, that's what makes it the most profitable for me. 
So what services do you offer? I mean, I guess it's pretty much anything in, in terms much, of construction and yeah, pretty much, pretty much anything in terms of uh, excavation. Pr that includes plumbing, uh, electrical, trenching for plumbing, trenching mm -hmm. for electrical, uh, sewer, sewer installations. We do right of way taps. We do gas lines. Uh, also grading, gravel driveways, we kind of do a little bit of everything. Are there certain jobs that are highest prof uh, profitability versus certain that are not, or is it pretty much the same across everything you do? Uh, definitely the highest profit would be um, new construction because there's a, like I said, there was a, there's a lot more variable. So for a house, we go and typically we bid the foundation excavation, we bid the uh, rain drains, backfill, driveway, uh, grading, mm -hmm. erosion control, and there's a lot more things that add up rather than just going and doing a, a, a gravel driveway yeah, or something like gotcha. that. Gotcha. When you say new construction, you mean those things that you're not actually building the house, you're not framing it, you're not involved on that level, right? Just just on the foundation prep and then after the foundation, uh, backfilling the perimeter. Gotcha. Yeah. Alani, what's your monthly overhead right now for your business, and what's the most expensive thing to keep going? Uh, the most expensive thing for me right now would definitely be the excavator, and that's okay. about $1,600. But on top of that, another reoccurring payment that I have to make is insurance for the excavator, insurance for the trailer, and insurance for the truck. If you add all your expenses just to keep operating, right, before you make a profit, what would it come to? It's about two thousand dollars. That's it. Mm -hmm. Two grand. Two thousand. So if you make four grand that month, you're in profit two thousand. Yeah. Wow. I thought you'd say like ten grand no. expenses, but you're keeping it pretty lean. Yeah. Okay. We've got a ton of lean videos with Paul Akers, you guys, and this is for you, and this is for you guys as well. Check them out. You'll learn how to be lean and make higher profit margins. Tell us what you see as providing good customer experience? Like what makes people come back to you? What makes people talk about you with their friends? Um, have you, and then have you had a negative experience where the customer was not happy and how did you deal with that as a professional? So the three keys that I, I have used was one, communication. That's the biggest thing in this field because the homeowner is not seeing what you're doing constantly. So if they don't know and if there's a miscommunication, then that can cause problems. So number one, communication. Number two, integrity. If you tell them that you're going to do something for that price, try to do it for that price. Even if something happens, just try to keep keep to your word. And number three, keeping clean. That's another big thing, especially in construction. If you leave a mess on the job site, they're not going to mm. call you back. I've only had a problem with one uh, customer. An opportunity to learn, right? <laughs> an opportunity to learn. And what I, what, what I ended up doing was I gave them a big discount from the original price and I went and completed the work exactly like what they wanted. Okay. And they ended up being happier, uh, much happier than any of, of my other customers because I came in, I was, I was true to my word. Where are the profit margins approximately? Profit margins in excavation are very high. Yeah. Typically, if I was to do a foundation and I was to charge $10,000 for the whole thing, and mm -hmm. if it was a smaller job, my expenses would be hauling off dirt, mm -hmm. uh, pipes, and gravel. So that would come out, typically it would come out to be like about two to $3,000. Okay. And the highest reoccurring expense though would be definitely the excavator, buying the truck, buying the trailer. And the fuel that you're using. And the fuel, yep. Okay. So your profit margins are like well above 50%. Yeah, I oh. would say so. Okay. Let's talk about the employees that you have. How many today? How much do you pay them? Any tips, tricks on that that you can share with us? I don't have any employees, but I do have okay. a partner, which I partnered up with my cousin and he's been a big help throughout nice. the whole process of the company. Mm -hmm. Definitely having somebody close with you and somebody that you trust is a huge, huge benefit when you start a company. So that helped a lot. Okay. Do you plan to hire at some point? I, yeah, I, I currently am looking to hire a uh, um, a machine operator okay. and laborer. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys know of anybody, let me know. <laughs> we'll pass along. Why do you want to hire a machine operator, though? What, what's 
what's that going to free you up to do? When I'm on site, I'm mainly in the uh, machine. Okay. So if I can get somebody to operate the machine, I would have a lot more time to focus on marketing and figure out different ways to market. I would also be able to focus more on communicating with clients, mm -hmm. uh, writing invoices, following up with paperwork, figuring out like all my insurances because I... I have a lot of, I even right now, I'm remembering everything that I need to do and, and there's a lot. <laughs> so you'd rather do that than being an excavator? Well, it, it's, it's, that's the way that the company would grow the most, so yeah. Gotcha. When you first opened Petra's Homes, what form of advertising did you use to get new customers? The number one thing that I did, and this is also my key to success personally was I started working for family and friends and people that I knew and I trusted. And once I got work with them, that slowly turned into self-marketing. That slowly turned into word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And that was r what really, really helped me out. So most of your customers today is word of mouth, yeah. is what you're saying? Wow, okay. Definitely. What are you spending on marketing uh, today, if anything, and what's been the best return for you? Uh, one thing that actually helped me out was I, I started making a bunch of t-shirts originally for for the employees and I. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started making more t-shirts that I was handing out to people. And, and when they were putting those t-shirts on, people would read my company name. People would read my phone number. And, and uh, I got a few calls from that as well. So that was helpful. Nice. But today, do you spend like on, do you have like a thousand dollar budget on Facebook or Instagram, or you don't spend anything on I socials? Don't, I don't usually, I focus mainly on word of mouth. Wow, okay. Let's talk about any potential education or training you need to get into the excavation construction business. I would recommend getting uh, your OSHA certification, at least OSHA 10, but I know there's an OSHA 30, and I know you can get different certificates for uh, excavation as well, like a, a general uh, operation, operating engineer license as well. Okay, do you, do you by any chance recall what that may cost and how long it could take? Uh, I know OSHA 10 <laughs> takes 10 hours and I, th I, I'm, I can't remember specifically the cost, but I think it was about $200. Okay, so not like in the thousands. Right? No. Okay, and why is that important to have? Uh, what, you can show that to your clients and it, it, gives the, it makes them feel more comfortable with you on site. Any other, you think, education or tips or tricks that are important just to start off successfully that come to mind? Definitely do your, your homework on it. And I, what I did was I watched a lot of YouTube okay. and I watched operators. I kind of saw what they did and I kind of tried to copy that. And you just got to kind of do your research before you get into it. But definitely YouTube is your, your best friend for that. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not an industry where you just open up a book, read yeah, it, and no, then all of a sudden really. you, you know everything? Uh, not really. Okay. This business can be seasonal, right? Like in the winter, it's rainy, it's mucky. What do you do in terms of just shifting your business to continue to grow in these slow seasons? Typically in the s slower seasons, I try to network, market. I try to get my name in people's mouths to just have people thinking about me, whether it's posting something, whether it's calling to see if I can get some more jobs, whether it's just taking pictures or cleaning my equipment. I just try to get to work with something in some way tor towards growing the business. Okay. Can you share maybe a couple specific tasks or stuff that you, systems that you use to sort of kick it into gear during slow season? Well, Is I it? use Instagram, okay. typically. That's primarily what I use for social media. And another trick that I found helpful in the slow seasons was to use Craigslist mm -hmm. and post jobs over there. Because I got, I, I, when I first started, that's kind of what fueled the company was Craigslist. When you started, not long ago, um, was there cert certain, what things did you struggle with, I guess? And did, did you have a moment when you're like, eh, I'm just gonna give up? Uh, one thing that I struggled with, cause I'm, a, I'm an introvert and I'm very antisocial. Yet you're uh, doing this, which yeah, is pretty awesome. This is, <laughs> well, one thing that I definitely struggled with was uh, talking to people at first and going okay. and giving bids, taking phone calls. I kind of would get nervous, especially since I, w I was always, and I still am a lot younger than the rest of the people in this field. And since it's such a competitive uh, field mm -hmm. for somebody like me, 
it was kind of harder to to gain that trust. But once I gained that trust from friends and from family, once they were able to tell people about me, that's kind of what skyrocketed us. So definitely the hardest thing was talking to people. But once I put that aside, once I put my uh, fear aside, and once I started talking to people, that's really what helped us out the most. What was that moment though? Like, what does it mean to put fear aside? You, you can't just switch a flip, a flip a switch. So did you just said, you know what, I'm done with this? Or what helped you overcome that? Well, I lost one job because one guy was there and he was a lot easier to talk to than I was for that one specific job and since I lacked in communication that's kind of what gave that job to that guy okay so once I prioritized the communication with the uh whatever contractors were on site and with the homeowner and with the client once I prioritized that communication that's really what helped out we'd love to hear your comments about your struggles when you got into the business, like Avani just shared his story. You guys, we love reading your comments, we love responding to them, so please comment below. One sentence, what did you overcome? What was your struggle? We appreciate that. What's your company's brand identity? I know it's super cold here and we're freezing, uh, but you did show us that little brand of so yours. So this is my brand identity, and actually my fiance designed this because nice. we live in the Pacific Northwest, so we have mountains, so this is a mountain. It's also a bridge because we're considered bridge city in Portland, and it's also a wave because we have the Pacific uh, Ocean. Nice. And how has this sort of helped the business? Because he, he, I know you don't have to show this now, but you, he's got the business name on the back of the shirt, so I guess if you can. Yeah, I can show it really quick. What this helped out with was if I was wearing cool. this, people were able to read what I do. And, okay. and I actually got a couple phone calls uh, while I was wearing it and while my friends were wearing it as well. So it was a good little uh, easy way to market the company. Okay. Um, anything else you could share in terms of the importance of having a brand identity as a construction person? Yes. It's very vital to your company because people want to know either your name and what you do. And the easiest way to remember that is if they remember mm. a symbol or a word that kind of put two and two together. So for me, it was my last name, Petrus Homes, because I, I develop homes and excavation. So it kind of goes together because you remember one thing which leads to the next thing and that's that's what I market everything with on my social media platforms, on my t-shirts, and also stickers uh, okay. for my equipment. Let's do Blitz. You guys, Blitz questions. Thank you for the fans that submitted questions. We'll read them here as well. What's your favorite business book? I don't really read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the one fact that changed your perspective on life forever? If you're not doing something that you love, then you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to be happy in life. So you either got to do something you love or learn to love what you do. Okay. Well, well said. What was the final thing that pushed you to start working on this business? People not believing in me as much as I believed in myself. And I kind of wanted to prove myself in a sense. Nice. Okay. What's the one thing you cannot start your day without except coffee? Prayer. Prayer. Awesome. Now at the stage of success, what advice would you give to your younger self? Be consistent. Uh, try to be to your word and stay to your word no matter what and also be disciplined. Okay, a couple fan, fan questions from Adrian Walker. I uh, was asking what were your biggest hurdles when you first started? Uh, not getting jobs at first and not being able to market because I started at the beginning of COVID so mm. there was a bunch of stuff going on then and that was the biggest hurdle and the only the only thing that helped me out was that is with that was consistent marketing okay uh, Antonio is asking did you do side jobs or did you just take the plunge I did side jobs at first yeah that anything helped? that would come okay. to me yeah anything that would connect me with a potential client okay awesome and then Quinn asked what was your fear before and after you started your own construction business my fear before was uh, the market and my fear now is still the market but um, what do you mean by that specifically the market because I there's so many things changing right mm. now and even with the whole uh, our currency the value of that is going yeah. up and there's just so so much room to grow but also so much risk in this market okay thank you thanks guys for submitting your questions Any challenges that you face as a business owner? Uh, I used to stress out a lot more until I started writing everything down. Mm. And that way, 
whatever was in my mind keeping me up at night, there I would just go. write it down on a piece of paper and I would have it in the morning and I could get it done in the morning rather than staying up because you, you don't get that much done at night like that. Do you think that a lot of the contractors make that mistake? Of, oh, yeah. And that's why they don't sleep at night? Oh, yeah. But that's that's another it's reason why keeping, keeping good communication helps out with that as well. Okay, that's awesome. Talk to us about your average work week. How many hours a day do you work? And uh, you know, break the day down for, for us. People just love to understand your world a little bit. Well, typically my day starts anywhere from seven to eight o'clock. And in the morning, I usually grease the machine. And if I need to take it to a job, I, I load it up on the trailer, make sure it's all clean and ready for the day. And then I try to get on site by like 9 a.m. ish. And typically I work from nine to five. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I definitely take, take as many breaks as I need to do in order to keep my mind healthy right. and to keep myself full of energy. So are you always on site or is there certain business things that you sort of allocate and give over to employees? Uh, depending on the job, I, I sometimes I'm on site. Usually I'm on site, but sometimes I also go and do bids in the workday, but I usually keep Saturdays and Sundays available for any invoices that I need to write, bids I need to write, any jobs that I need to go see or stuff like that. How are you planning to continue to grow if that's your goal? Like what do you specifically need to do to take on bigger jobs, to, to do more volume? Um, let's talk about that. Well, my goal for the next couple of years is to grow a strong team on the field mm -hmm. for me to be able to have the freedom to go and get more jobs, go bid more jobs and just focus on marketing majorly. Okay, which which marketing uh, platforms do you are you gonna focus on and actually start spending money on, do you think? Go and meeting up with people that I know, whether it's just for coffee or whether it's on site, uh, connecting with contractors, connecting with architects that I know and just, kind of just trying to pull in and get every single job that comes my way. Cause at the moment we are limited to the amount of people that we have on site. Mm -hmm. So once I can grow that team, I definitely can, can take in more jobs. So you're not gonna be investing in like Facebook advertising, Instagram. Sounds like you're all, you know, all about in-person relationship building kind of an opportunity and it is marketing, but mm -hmm. it's unique, it's really cool. Yeah, for construction and especially again in this industry with excavation and, and with construction in general, I would actually say it's majorly uh, word of mouth based yeah. because people wanna know that you're like, cause in construction, people would rather have somebody that's good, somebody that's easy to work with, uh, rather than somebody that has the best quality, but they're really hard to work with. Gotcha. You guys, here's the tip trick that I, that, that I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, why don't you tell us what you did that then helped your business grow? Uh, taking Saturdays off. That's it? Saturdays and Sundays off. And I learned this from my gym buddies actually because they were working hard and uh, working out in the gym every single day. And once they skipped like Tuesdays and Thursdays, once they took off on a couple of days, their bodies were able to heal mm -hmm. and they were able to come back to the gym with a lot more energy. And that's, that's what I did for not only my physical health, uh, but also my men mental health and that gave, that improved my attitude because if you don't have an attitude, uh, a positive attitude on the site, then nobody there is gonna have a positive attitude because whatever you radiate, you're gonna see on your employees and you're gonna see on the overall quality of the job. So definitely take, take breaks on Saturdays and Sundays and whatever else days you can. So that's the success tip is basically working a lot is not a good thing, find the work-life balance. Yeah, don't burn out. Definitely. Okay. Those burning out, you guys, I'd love to hear your comments about what your life is like right now. And if you implement what we're talking about here, come back and comment. Let us know how it's changed. We'd love to hear from you. Just in conclusion, um, you know, what can you tell our audience, our young audience, all kinds of ages, doesn't matter, what your advice is with what you've learned so far? Uh, stay disciplined and be consistent to whatever you do. Because if you do something for one day, maybe you're not going to grow at it. Maybe you're not going to be the best at it. But if you do it for a hundred days mm -hmm. and you look back, you're going to get way, way farther than when you started. Okay. So be consistent, 
stay devoted to something and stay disciplined as well. Okay, awesome. Avani, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right, you guys, that's a wrap with Avani, the owner of Petri's Homes. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Young guy, started out not long ago, but he's on track for major success. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of our amazing content. We appreciate you a lot. Thank you.